Uh, so thank you very much, everyone, for the patience. Thank you for being here. Thank you to the wonderful panelists. And thank you, um, uh, Frank, for the opportunity uh, to discuss these important issues with uh, these uh, great uh, people and scholars on inspirational leadership through and beyond the COVID. Okay, so what I would like uh, to to discuss today is that how the uh, COVID-19 has really uh, transformed all our lives and uh, in a way that we couldn't uh, think uh, before. And uh, we definitely are in the middle of uh, a health crisis, economic crisis, and a social crisis. But very few people uh, think about uh, uh, how leaders are too uh, capable to deal with that, with that crisis, because in the middle of this social crisis, we also have a, a leadership crisis. We have seen in the last uh, few months, in the last few, uh, actually few years, there is a decline in the trust that uh, uh, people have on leaders. So we have a leadership crisis as well. So when we, this is the paradox, and some of you are going to talk about it. The more we need uh, the leaders now, okay, that's when we leaders uh, are, we are missing some of the key qualities. Just to give you an example, 37% of the people that uh, we interviewed, they don't trust the CEO of the company. So trust is the currency of leadership. We need leaders to uh, have uh, this to earn and to uh, gain the respect and the trust of the people. So how can we do that? In my book, uh, yours truly, what I have found is that it's one quality that is more important than anything else which is authenticity. People want leaders to be uh, honest, to be genuine, to be themselves. So the first thing to be an inspirational leader is just be yourself. And that is going to be my key message uh, to, the, to the audience and to the world today, is that uh, how can we become more inspirational by becoming actually ourselves? So my invitation is that, Develop your own leadership style. Be yourself, not the copy of others. So in the, in, in the, the model that I have developed, I have, I call it the three A's, okay? The heart, the habit, and the harmony. The heart meaning that uh, you have to lead others uh, with your heart. You have to make this emotional connection. Uh, it is a time also to be honest to others, to have complete transparency and be communication. So true to yourself, honest with others, and also responsible with the organization, responsible uh, with the uh, society. And creating this kind of uh, harmony uh, among each other. So just in a few words, because we don't have much time, I will say that we need to transform our passion our motivation, our inner core values into a common purpose. Transform your passion uh, to your common uh, purpose. And uh, I have uh, a model with uh, nine different recommendations of how to become inspirational, the nine qualities, which are the passion that I mentioned, the humility. Nobody in this situation can do everything, have all the answers. So we don't need more uh, superheroes that I call narcissistic, charismatic narcissistic. We actually need humble leaders that are able to ask for help, that are able to ask others and to share their vulnerability and share our experiences. So definitely we need a growth mindset. We need to innovate. We need uh, to uh, give feedback and we need to build this resilience that uh, we talk about. This is an opportunity. Let's, let's see this, an opportunity to learn. Like uh, with new, method, the new technology, we have this mentality that uh, we have to become a little bit stronger uh, after this adversity, and we have to do it together. So my final message is that how can we do it uh, together? And for that, we are going to have this discussion. Can 
inspirational leadership we learn, okay? And how can we learn about inspirational leadership? So I'm going to give the the, the floor to each of the of the panelists, and uh, we are going to start with uh, Emma uh, from from the US. That uh, she is going to uh, talk about how we need to inspire people with integrity. So Emma, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. Uh, my warm greetings from New York, New York City. I'm Emma Rakelian. I'm originally from Armenia, and I have been based in New York City since 90s. Known as a risk taker and transformational leader, I had an opportunity to work in more than 46 countries with top companies around the world, and I learned a lot about the world. I especially feel proud that I was an advisor and sponsor to several social impact programs as well. My career based on the management consulting and technology innovation, my, uh, my main passion, my main integrity was the, uh, related to people. How do you promote, how do you get people excited and how do you change the world? Who are the fearless leaders and inspirational leaders? So let me play that role right now. There are so many places in the world that there is a war and then we, we as leaders, we also need to pay attention to the problems that cannot be overlooked. There is a war even in Armenia today. And we have so many strong inspirational leaders not to overlook the problems in front of our eyes and inspire others by taking risks and doing the right thing for the world. I had many wins and learnings in my life, but I learned that wins do not come easy. But I also learned, realized that learnings that are the ones that inspire others, change their lives and create inspirational leaders. Who are the inspirational leaders in my mind and how they inspire? We live in extraordinary connected world where every decision we make has an impact. And nowadays, every decision we make has more impact because the world is connected. So the inspirational leaders have to make decisions responsibly. And leadership is a lifestyle. It's not a role. It's not a position. It's a lifestyle. That's how you live. That's how you drive your integrity. True leaders inspire only with integrity. You have to be who you are. And there are many ingredient, ingredients that we can say what is important. But I'm going to have three key areas, which is from my book, Business Caring Formula. There are seven ingredients. But today, what's happening in the world, the COVID, the pandemic, so many war areas in the world, we have to have leaders, inspirational leaders, who are responsible. They are change engines. They lead the change. And they are positive leaders. While there are cultural and environmental differences, we all recognize that. I strongly believe that any individual that has to have these leadership qualities, they can inspire. And they all can have this this qualities, responsible leader, change engine, lead, and positive leaders. Now, when you drive a change, you take more risks. You take higher risks when the change is much bigger. And what I will close my two words here, waiting is not leadership. So you inspire by taking the first step Inspire by taking risks. Inspire with your values and with your integrity all the time. Don't be afraid. Lead. Make responsible decisions. And inspire others by driving the change to a better world. Thank you. Thank you very much, Emma. 
for your uh, interesting and inspiring uh, words. We are going to turn to Igor uh, from the Ukraine, and I think uh, he's going to, uh, to share uh, his experience uh, uh, from Ukraine and talking about the crisis almost like a national uh, lifestyle. So for you, is the, uh, the floor, Igor. Hi, everybody. I'm Igor. I'm from Ukraine, uh, from Kiev. And uh, uh, today I want uh, to tell uh, a story with more practical aspect. Uh, but again, this is related to the leadership and the role of leaders uh, during the coronavirus period. So uh, the point is that in Ukraine we have uh, the crisis. Uh, each uh, st crisis in Ukraine steadily happens each five years, uh, and uh, this is almost uh, like a lifestyle of uh, of the nation that. Uh, we have to be prepared each five years uh, that something will happen. Uh, and uh, this year, uh, by the way, I represent uh, the, uh, I'm the young representative and uh, the founder of uh, medium-sized business. And uh, this year, my organization was going uh, through the crisis as well as uh, each, of, each of us uh, during this period of time. Uh, a little bit overview. So in my organization, uh, there is 150 people and the management uh, size of our team, which is the core team, is eight people. Um, we do uh, software development uh, and outsourcing services. Um, and uh, uh, so as soon as my management team is eight people, uh, my role is generally in the company to inspire uh, these eight people and to drive them, to drive the rest of organization. Uh, and uh, uh, when uh, the crisis happened, Sorry, there is some noise. When the, when the crisis happened, uh, uh, during the first uh, days, I generally decided that we don't, uh, I don't want the crisis. So I don't want to be involved in, in that uh, that much. And I strongly believe that the crisis uh, generally is most likely in our minds. Uh, so this is the part of our mind which happens with us. Uh, uh, and uh, this is uh, important to, to realize this. And... Uh, uh, I thought that uh, we just need a good plan to go through this. So we as a company, me as a leader, so we need a plan to go through uh, the crisis. Uh, and that means that we will not be able uh, mindly to be involved in this. Uh, to say the truth, uh, during the first uh, period, uh, during the first uh, a few days, uh, everybody in, the, in my company, uh, as well as everywhere, was in a huge panic. So, and uh, I understood this panic as uh, people didn't have, a, uh, there, was, no, there was, uh, was a huge level of uncertainty. So people didn't realize, didn't understand what to do. Uh, and each day, everything was changing. So that what happened yesterday, the situation which we had yesterday, today it's different situation. And uh, uh, this level of uncertainty uh, really affects uh, people's minds. And uh, I understand uh, my uh, role as a leader, uh, as uh, somebody who will give uh, uh, the core support to my management team and who will be like a kernel, uh, like, uh, like somebody who gives people understanding that uh, uh, we will go through this easily. So, and I think this is a, a very good uh, statement of the leader. So the support uh, and the core support of, of, uh, of the team. Uh, by the way, so important to know that we passed the crisis quite good. So during the first week, we uh, mostly solved uh, all the issues which we had. Uh, and, and we uh, were lucky to grow up uh, due, during the crisis. Uh, so, yes, I understood my role during the coronavirus as the leader who supports uh, the people. Uh, and uh, I think I was successful in, in doing this because I understood as a leader the, uh, the strengths and the weakness points of my, of my team, of each team member and the team. Uh, and I was uh, supporting each member in the team with the uh, weakness points and uh, was trying to use the uh, strengths points. Um, uh, my key role was uh, to give uh, the vision and uh, the path of how our organization should move forward. Uh, for sure, by understanding the, the market situation, 
So how I saw this situation in the market that most of our clients will be uh, will, will be facing uh, challenges and issues, and uh, most of our competitors will do the same. So they will have uh, issues and, and challenges. Uh, in this situation, I saw this that if we will be uh, using the client uh, total uh, focus, if we'll be having a total focus on client oriented approach, that means we'll be caring about our clients and uh, we will have more value inside of our organization rather than our competitors. And that was my path uh, and my word uh, and my message to the whole uh, company that we should uh, make a total focus on client oriented approach. Uh, and by this approach, everybody in the organization could understand, does this something we do today is relevant to our uh, focus or not? Um, uh, and, and this generally helped us to unite people inside of organization. A uh, little bit about the plan which we created. Uh, so during the first uh, week, we've been focused on creating the plan for, for the further period. Uh, and uh, I think like in many organizations, so different uh, departments, uh, different teams were creating the plan. And my role as a leader was to verify the final plan, if it is something that we should do or not. And to say the truth, the first plan which I saw was totally not look, uh, didn't look like a plan. So it was something, but it was not a plan. Uh, and uh, there was a lot of work to communicate uh, to the team uh, what's that right plan should be and to support again uh, the team and to use the weakness point, to help with the weakness points and to, to use the strength point of each team member uh, in the team uh, to create the right plan. So finally, during uh, uh, the week, uh, we were able to, uh, let's say, to unite everybody uh, with this, uh, our thinking, uh, how we should move out uh, during coronavirus period and to create uh, the plan which we had. And finally, we really had the plan how we want to move forward. Uh, moreover, so something what we did to create a unity and to create really a mechanism which would uh, so support all the people in the organization is the following. So first of all, the organization is not only the management. So we had the eight people uh, who is the management in our organization, but there is 150 people in total. And uh, that what we as leaders, we... So we as leaders, we see uh, sometimes things totally different uh, than, uh, than just usual team members who, who are going together with us. And uh, uh, we came to people, to all the team members, and we communicated uh, the plan and the vision which we had in very small details. So what... So that was generally managed by, for sure, by our HR uh, team. But uh, generally, we had a very detailed description for each team member. So that, how does situation today affect you? How does the plan which we have affect you? Uh, what you should do, what you should not do. So what does this our uh, general high-level plan and high-level vision uh, requires from you today to do? And this gave us understanding and uh, this gives the whole uh, team understanding of how we should move forward uh, and, and create the unity behind uh, different people and different uh, different people on different levels inside of organization. Uh, as, a, as a result, we had uh, really a, a many, uh, many good ideas inside of our organization, which was not only an idea as they were implemented. And uh, we felt uh, a push inside of our organization that this uh, kind of approach gives a speed, uh, brings ideas, brings realization. And after uh, this, uh, I would say like during today, during the, uh, I would say second part of Corona crisis period, we still use this approach with, uh, uh, with uh, we use uh, good communication with people around us, we support uh, each weakness and strengths uh, points uh, of each team member. Uh, and uh, my role as a leader inside of organization is generally unite everybody and support. But th this doesn't mean that uh, uh, I, I just uh, support people. So I do decisions, I uh, organize everybody, I validate the decisions. So, okay. but the message today is uh, that uh, unity and uh, 
uh, supportive role of the leader is very important. Okay, thank you very much, Igor. Thank you very much for sharing uh, your very unique experience and um, insights uh, with uh, us. We are going to move on, and then we're going to have Anne. Uh, based in the U.S. And it seems going to add some more practical uh, recommendations and advice to become an inspirational leader in these times of crisis, as Igor was just talking about. So the floor is yours, Anne. Thank you so much, and thanks for being here with all your amazing panelists. Um, I'm Anna McCoy, and I am the CEO of Anna McCoy Global Ventures. I've spent the last uh, 20 years of my life in real estate development and doing projects throughout the United States. I've had the privilege of uh, traveling throughout the world and empowering women. Woman, act now, learn lots, and live your dream uh, is a book that helps women to start uh, their businesses to fulfill their dreams. Uh, so my intention today is really just to share some very quick tips uh, with you. I've spent the last six months helping my clients here in the U.S. to uh, navigate this terrain of not only COVID, but also racial uh, issues. Let me just say it that way. Racial issues compounded the COVID crisis here and around the world. So uh, these are some of the lessons that I certainly have learned. Number one is to be nimble. And that word nimble is to be quick-witted. And I believe as leaders, this is the moment that we all have the opportunity to put to work really the lessons that we've learned. And it's to be quick-witted. It means to be decisive, discerning. And swift in judgment, that means you have to be quick about it. You know, in this COVID uh, crisis, what was so amazing is having to pivot, having to decide very quickly whether you're going to live or die your businesses, and not necessarily individuals, but uh, whether or not your business will actually survive this. So here are three things when I think about being nimble. Think ahead. Get comfortable mastering what-if scenario. You know, we just didn't have time to figure out or even hold on to the, the, this idea of what normal was. We had to be quick to make the change, changes if we were going to, uh, survive in this economy. Number two is keep your eye on the shifting field. Uh, and what I mean about this is that everything is moving. I mean, there were things that I had to work with with my clients that were just absolutely incredible in the moment, things that we were not prepared for. So keep your eye on the shifting field. The next one is be quick to make adjustments and decisions on people and systems. And it was an incredible time where we had to choose who do we keep, who do we let go, what systems do we keep in place. Number two is be prepared. Inventory your own skill set as a leader. Know where you are. You know, Stephen Covey, he, he, one of his principles was sharpen your saw. I mean, it was a moment that you had to begin to look at new things and also begin to uh, inventory your skill set, inventory your team skill sets and abilities. And then number three under prepared is to master virtual leadership communication. Now, this was something that we were not prepared for. We may have used it, but in this COVID period, we have seen this immense adoption of technology from the youngest to the eldest. And so I think even as leaders, we have to learn how to show up fully, even in these spaces, and let the energy that you possess move out into that virtual world. And then finally, number three is be now. I absolutely love this. This is now more than ever an opportunity and a time for us to practice conscious awareness that we must be now. We have to learn, number one, learn from the field. And what I mean is that as a leader, we feel like sometimes we have to be the people to make these decisions. But if you learn from the field, and these are the people that are on the front line, and here in many places we uh, had the word essential workers, where so many of us really did not see people who were in these positions as essential. And so we have to learn from the field because those people were out in the workplace. They were in the marketplace. And so as leaders, we had to change the way we view, not from a top-down leadership perspective, but really tapping into 
your people and to your staff to understand what is really happening on the ground. And this is one thing, even now we're not free of this, is that it could be the one thing that saves your business. Because what I do know, and even in our business, uh, people were telling, hey, we can't do this, we can't do that. So can we do this? Can we suggest this particular system, which were probably things totally against or out of the comfort zone of your current business? The second thing is honor how people have adapted, how they produce and contribute. Even, uh, even in this time, is like, as leaders, we have to be sensitive to what people are bringing to the table. And what I mean, even in the simplest forms, is that we never thought, you know, 100% of our employees would be working in their home, right? Now, we may see it as, okay, we're dealing with the issue, but I think we have to honor how people have adapted. They had to adapt with their children. They had to adapt with additional people, maybe their young adults coming home from college. And as leaders, it is our responsibility to make sure that not only are they doing the work and being productive for our businesses, but also paying attention to the emotional stability of the people that are working with us and honor that space. And the way that I love to, to talk about honoring it is that if they help us get through it and we are more successful, then as businesses, we should be more generous during this time. Number three is be now invite diverse engagement from the line worker to the C-suite on the things that impact community, employees, customers, and stakeholders. I cannot stress this enough. The entire world has been impacted by COVID. The entire world has been impacted by racial injustices. We're in a season and a time where people are paying attention to people. We are caring about our neighbors. We are becoming global citizens, and that's why all of us have gathered here today. And so I would encourage you all is that as you continue this journey, these three simple things, be nimble, be prepared, and be now. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anne, for this very specific recommendation and inspirational uh, as well. We are going to uh, move on with our next uh, speaker, and I think it's uh, going to be a little bit more of the uh, leadership from uh, less of a perfectionist. So how we can deal with the paradox of leadership and how we can embrace Okay, imperfection and to share the vulnerability mm -hmm. that also mm -hmm. Anne was mentioning. Okay, so Alf, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. My name is Alf Rehn. I'm calling you today from Copenhagen and I am a professor of innovation, design and management at the University of Southern Denmark, in addition to having been a strategic advisor for companies all over the globe, including bizarrely North Korea. Uh, what I'm going to mention today or comment on today is a topic that springs to mind specifically because of the many conversations I have today with executives who find this current crisis, but also the broader leadership discourse quite problematic. It is incredibly easy to sit as a professor and say what a leader should be. I can list tremendous Men, tremendously many fine things you should be. You should be transparent. You should be listening. You should be decisive. You should be just all round fucking wonderful. However, we all know that lists like these, lists of things you should be, will sooner or later all come up against a very specific paradox. And that is to be, for instance, very decisive will automatically at some points to some people mean that you are not listening enough, you're not building enough consensus. To be a highly listening empathic leader will to some be, in, be interpreted as being weak, maybe even kind of wishy-washy. Leaders, particularly during crises, are struggling massively with this. They're struggling with the fact that we leadership scholars, and I count myself as one of those, often create an absolutely impossible task for leaders to follow. We state that they should be all things to all people when we know full well that what is inspirational to certain of our underlings may sound like empty uh, business words to others, where we know 
that the manner in which we, for instance, progress, you know, kind of try to show and perform uh, aggressive, decisive actions will to some be incredibly off-putting. My, I talk about the leadership paradox because my task for the last years has been to explain to leaders there is no perfect leadership. There will never be a perfect leader. I have met some of the absolutely finest leaders that this world has put upon this earth. I have met uh, President Barack Obama. I have met the great Jack Welch. They are people I admire greatly, yet they are simply human. Both made mistakes. Both had flaws because this is the human condition. So for me, what is inspirational leadership through and beyond COVID? It should be, and I'm very ha happy to have heard this word before also from Anna. It should be a question of humility, of realizing that, that leaders are simply humans, that we will never, ever achieve perfection because every leadership action is a trade-off. To do something means to pay a price. To be decisive means to pay in sensitivity. To be sensitive means to pay in speed. Yet if we keep on talking about inspirational leadership as this perfection, this icon in the sky, this great house on a hill that could somehow be reached, what we are in fact creating is a tremendous amount of stress in leaders, particularly during a situation when we're all stressed, when we're all nervous, when we're all confused. What I have tried to bring to my conversations with executives, many of whom are privately expressing a high degree of fear, confusion, anger even, is a form of mercy. Now, I know this is a word that is used fairly little, in leadership discussions. But I believe it is an important world. Yeah. We need to understand that all leadership actions are paradoxical at their very core. They are always somehow flawed and we need to show mercy to this innate flawedness of leaderships. Our Margarita here, our esteemed host, started by kind of talking about moving away from the superhero myth. Mm. I totally and 100% agree to this. But I think we actually need to go further. We need to bring back the human into our leadership debate. We need to bring back flawedness, not just transparency, but to show the flawed nature. Today, I talked to one of my underlings, a new student, a PhD student who came and board into my section. What did I want to tell her about my leadership? I didn't tell her about my communication because my communication is shown in my actions, not in what I think is my communication style. I didn't tell her what demands I would put on her. I told her about the many ways in which I tend to fail as a leader. I explained to her that I sometimes forget people's names. I explained to her that I have problems really kind of engaging sometimes as systematically as I should. I explained to her that I'm terrible with administration. Why? Because I believe that when we communicate our leadership, it is not our role simply to paint ourselves as this perfect thing and state vapidities about, I want to be inspirational. Rather... It is to build a bond to those who would follow us. Because true inspiration does not come from the leaders alone. It comes from the bond that is built between leader and follower, which Margarita also mentioned in her conversation on followership, and which my esteemed colleague from India will probably comment on in the next, uh, next talk here. But it is through those flaws and through that humanity that true inspiration can be built, not alone by the leader, not just mm. in a leader, but in a community between us, human, humans, followers, leaders, all. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you all for your inspiring words and for building this conversation. And I think we already see a thread, okay? And as you mentioned, okay, now uh, our last uh, speaker, Adita, is going to go even deeper to that because I've already opened that idea that inspiration and building leadership is not just as a matter of the leader, but also it has to be included the followers. So Adita, tell us more about that. The yours, Thank, the you. Yours. Thank you so much, Margarita. Uh, first of all, I want to be clear, clear, I haven't written a book yet, but inspired <laughs> by all of you, I'm probably going to start you will, writing. You will. 
<laughs> Hopefully, it should get published by someone at least out there. The world is in a global crisis. Millions of people are infected. People are hurt. People are dying. That's the truth. Global trade is not happening. We have a situation where education and healthcare stretch to its limits. It's a global crisis. The irony is this has happened before too. To give you an example, about a hundred years ago, you had the Spanish influenza, what we call the Spanish influenza, at least, which killed millions of people across the world. Seven hundred years ago, we had something called the Black Death, the plague, which happened in Europe, killed millions of people. So, all of this has happened before, and all of this will probably happen again. To follow, you know, what uh, ancient uh, Hindu and Buddhist scriptures say, it is all nirvana and karma. It goes round and round. Uh, is the circularity of existence is the circularity of events, and to take things forward from there, I would say that leadership also is fluid. It is something which evolves and re-evolves with time and situation. Leadership is basically a cause and an effect of the surrounding environment. We tend to forget that, but at its very very core, it is all about people, about the leaders who are leading. And the people who are being led—that's what we need to remember. To give an example, in the Second World War, you had types of leaders who were hard charging, charismatic, like a Rommel or a Patton. And on the other hand, you had people who were more subdued, who were more planning, like Eisenhower, for example, or a Hugh Dowding. Who was more important? Both were important. Because in the end, if you wanted to win a battle, you'd go with a Patton. If you wanted to win a war, you'd go with an Eisenhower. Modern technology. Has made sure, however, that this pandemic which we are facing is not as similar as we want it to be, like previous problems. Social distancing, lockdowns, these are all things which are now imprinted in our psyche. In such a situation, leadership in its way has changed. It has become more diffused. It is now not only a function of the leader; it is as much about the person who is following. So, in my humble opinion, I beg to differ a bit from what Alf said, and I say. People want heroes, and the heroes are not people. They are manifestations of what can be better. Perfection can never be achieved, but that doesn't stop you from wanting to achieve per se, uh, per perfection. And that's paradoxical in its own viewpoint, which is there typically. A, you need to have resilience. This is leadership right now. You need to be able to get punched, fall down, and get up again, and follow the course. It's not easy, but leadership is never le- easy. It's not about performance leadership. It's about resilient leadership. And that is backed by decisiveness. You have to take a decision. Not doing anything is not an option in today's world anymore. And yet you have to be agile. You have to be nimble. You have to go with the flow. Uh, you know, as Muhammad Ali used to say, "He flies like a butterfly, stings like a bee." That's what you got to be if you want to be leader in today's world. That's the first point. You have to be empathetic and emotionally intelligent. If, if there was ever a time, it is now. But as important, it's great. You have to listen to people. You have to understand them, not merely just hear them. But you are, if you ask me, what is the biggest need today? Is need diversity, diversity in the people who are working in your organization, empowering them. Because when you empower them, when you get diversity, you empower yourself as an organization. You empower yourself as a leader. It's not a one-way street. People think it's only leaders who give. No, leaders need to take. It's what you get that what makes you a truly leader. That is your inspiration as a leader to go forward. You have to be culturally intelligent. The world is not about being local. You have to have a pulse globally, not only in your country. Remember, we are socially in our bubbles right now. We are in our houses. We are in our offices. We are in our neighborhoods. But look at this virtually. A thousand of us from the best the world has to offer online right now. So you better have a cultural sensibilities. You have a bird's eye view what's happening in the world. And most important is communication. You have to communicate constantly. You have to be rapid. You have to be frequent, and you have to be contextual. And it's a two-way street. Communication is not about giving the message. Communication is about collaborating. Remember, the top-down model is over. The command and control model is over. It's diffused now. An individual is going to be responsible for their own actions, for their own responsibility, and you, as a leader, need to be, inspire them on their own levels to do that. That's going to be very, very critical. In summary, and I'm kind of we're running out of time. Don't worry, Margaret. I can see the time, right? In summary, what I like to say is. Has the game changed? No, it hasn't. Have the rules of the game changed? You bet it has. I'm from India. We love a game called cricket over here. Cricket, in its purest form, is a five-day game. It evolved. It became a one-day game, and that was a very short version. Now it's played over three or four hours. It's evolved. Similarly, leadership is also going to evolve with the situation that is coming up. 
in summary, my final few words is who is an inspiring leader? An inspiring leader is someone who is empathetic, emotionally intelligent, decisive, agile, culturally intelligent, and communicative as a person. Can all of them be in one person? Probably not. But that does not stop you from aspiring to be that person. And I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Adita. Thank you all very much to the amazing uh, panelists. It's been a pleasure. If I may, I just want to summarize. I think we all have a common message. And I think the common message is that if you want to be an inspirational leader, you don't need to be a superhero. You can change to the mentality of what I call the unsung heroes uh, or the more uh, human uh, heroes that you are able to be true to yourself, that you share your vulnerability. And I think you are responsible for making this world a little bit a better place for everyone. I think we're perfect with time. Thank you, everyone who was watching us. Thank you, all of you. My pleasure being here. All right, we need to take a groupie uh, write down. So everybody smile, please. Okay. Um, can you stop sharing the screen if it's possible? I, 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 I'm sorry, I didn't know how, how I could do that. So. Okay, let it, let, it, let, it, let, it, let it be, let it be. Let's just take a selfie. Go for it. Okay, no, no, wait, wait, wait a second. I didn't want you to do it sorry, uh, during the conversation. But... Um... Yeah. You you take a self take, basically you take a I took a selfie uh, and um, I'm now waiting for you to do that the same waiting for all the attendees to take selfie okay, from the, take a selfie and then I will because this is one two three two. now <laughs> three people finished we're still missing three three more to go. Mm, fine. Person. Somebody hasn't done Next. their bit. Margar Marguerite, yes. have you uh, have you taken your selfie? No. Okay. No, look no. on your screen. You should have a uh, question asking you to take a selfie. Have Press on the tag next to the poll called "Virtual Group Fee." In the oh, it looks bottom. like a, uh, at the very bottom. It looks like a virtual reality uh, kind of. Uh, picture at the bottom. Okay. I can share my vulnerability. This brand the world doesn't go with me. Okay, no problem. Can, can you see the mic? Can you see the mic over there? The mic icon? Yes. After that, there's another icon. After that, it says virtual group fee. After the mic saying, icon. Yes, yes, yes. Press on it. Yes. Take a selfie. It says take a selfie. Ah, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a. Uh, um, wait a Take second. Yourself, say yes. Yes, yes, yes. I'm gonna get a, 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 a screen. So. Okay, you know, I share. I think this is better. Okay, have you shared it? Take yes. a selfie and share it. I, if I should share. Is the, it says is this all right? I guess it's all right. No, no, no. It's, it's got, it asks for a message. Can you, should you share this? Have you taken the selfie picture? Okay, press on virtual group fee. Yeah, but it doesn't, it doesn't allow me. I mean, I, I press the virtual group fee and then it doesn't do anything to me. Because uh -huh. I, I still have the PowerPoint. I, I, I cannot get rid of the PowerPoint. Oh, she's, she's looking at the PowerPoint and not... Yeah, can yes, you? That's what I, that's, I have yeah. the PowerPoint and I, it's unable... Yes, can you can you push oh, can you turn I mean can you open up your browser if you're using Chrome or Safari or Windows? Okay, let me Okay. Okay guys, we just want to share that got a lot of people attending this right now who are not speakers. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think the problem might be that uh, she is uh, sharing the screen the presentation. Uh -huh. so uh, okay. Yeah. It stopped ah, okay, okay, okay. Now, now, <laughs> now, finally. Oof. All right. <laughs> okay. So now I get this. Is, and the, say the cam for is okay. The virtual, the virtual goofy, but uh, I think I'm gonna get again the the screen so that is very nice. 
with all of you. Say, share it. Yes, I got a screenshot and I think it looks very nice. Yeah, but can you? Amazing. Don't worry. Okay, so thank you so much. It's been really nice to meet you before. I hope that we can keep in touch because I think we have a lot of things in common. I really loved all your all your comments, and I think we were all going in the same direction. So end of the build up, and I think we we were able to um, uh, communicate a, a, a unified message to uh, everyone. So um, hopefully we we keep in touch. I will share also the the picture and the. The the screen uh, shot and uh, just let me know if um, you can buy in Madrid. Uh, we can have coffee and and share and sometimes virtually uh, we can do something together. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you very much for all who attended. Thank Cheers. you. Cheers. Take care. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. 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 Okay. Bye. Bye. Okay, thanks.